Good morning, ladies. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Let's start by calling this first Zoom meeting of the East Hampton Village Zoning Board to order. Uh, Jason at LTV has the agenda and he will be posting a phone number to call in if you have comments or objections. Um, and he also said that there's about a 40 second delay, so be prepared for that. First, we have to approve the minutes of February 14th, 2020. If there are no additions or corrections, I'd like a motion to accept the Take minutes as submitted. Make a motion. All in Second. favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Next, we have three determinations the written by our village attorney, Beth Baldwin, um, after which Ms. Bennett will poll the board. Uh, if anybody has wants more information, the complete application is on file at Village Hall. The first determination is Edward W. Williams, QPRT, and Lisa B. Williams, QRPT, QPRT, from 200 Lily Pond Lane. The application is granted. Ms. Marigold? Yes. Mr. Harden? Yes. Mr. Hillel? Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Yes. Okay, the next determination is Ron J. Vinder, 10 Baiting Hollow Road. And that application is hereby granted. Ms. Marigold? Yes. Mr. Harden? Yes. Mr. Hillel? Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Yes. And the third and last one is Nadinia C. Rumbaugh and Donald E. Handelman as trustees of 8 West Dune Lane. And that disposition of application is also granted. Ms. Marigold? Yes. Mr. Harden? Yes. Mr. Hillel? Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Yes. Now we have... Three other things. Uh, we have a request for screening approval of the David Andrew Trust, revocable trust at 27 Windmill Lane. Is the applicant present? The applicant is currently not on the phone right now, but because of the delay, I suggest that we uh, wait for them to make sure. The phone number is displayed on the bottom of the screen for 27 Windmill Lane. And it will be uh, Daniel or Alfred calling in. And Pam, the information is also available online, right? As far as yes, the, it is. Yep. All the files have been scanned by Pam and are available um, for the public to view online at the town's website, the village's website. So. Yes. <laughs> With John uh, John McGurk not being on the on the at the meeting, uh, we're gonna have Chris sit on all these, correct? Yes. That's great. Well, we can skip to the next one and uh, go back if someone comes online. Uh, <clears throat> the next one is care of the Maidstone premises of Lexington Lounge LLC, two hundred seven Main Street. It's a request to amend a determination. Is the applicant present on this one? There are currently, oh, one person just came in. Let me go see. Applicant, you are on the air. One second, let me mute them and unmute them. One second. Uh, John uh, applicants, can you meeting. please mute your TV in the background? Okay. There we I go. Have two, I, I have two applicants now. on the line, and uh, both of you are unmuted. Could you please state your names? Can you hear us? Hello. This is Daniel and Alfred. Okay, so we'll go back to um, this is the David Andrew Trust, Revocable Trust, 27. Windmill Lane. Yes. Honey Ackerman is here. Oh. Hello, you have Alfred Wojtowski and Daniel Jelanini from CBT Architects on the line. Applicant at the meeting. Hello, this is Lynn Ackerman on Maidstone. 
All okay. participants Elena, are muted, wait? and they can unmute themselves. I am, I'll uh, unmute the two applicants for the first uh, for this proposal, and then I will go down the line. Thank you. Applicants, you are unmuted. Hello, you have Daniel Gellarmini and Alfred Wojciechowski from CBT Architects. Okay. You can also... state your proposal. Could you repeat that, please? You can, can you state, state your proposal. Your proposal? Sir, do you want to tell us why you're here for 27 yes. Windmill Lane? Uh, yes. Uh, as part of the condition to build the garage and the accessory buildings, we need to submit a screening plan to the um, zoning and planning boards. So uh, we have submitted that um, uh, screening plan to your, your board. Uh, for review, for adequacy of screening. Okay. So you're putting the garage in the the far left corner? The northeast corner of the site. Right. And is there enough turn room to get back onto the driveway? Yes. Yes, there is. Okay. And I assume all the other violations were cleared up. That is correct. Okay. And it, Billy, you saw the you saw the planting plan, correct? You're okay with it? Uh, <clears throat> what was submitted is a not necessarily a planting plan. Uh, what was submitted is an existing conditions plan, and I think the applicant's point is that there's adequate screening currently for the that supports construct, constructing the garage and the pool house. So that, they're not proposing to add anything new. They're just showing us that, or they're showing the board that there's adequate existing screening. Okay. There's the high fence and there's that, that great big tree is gonna stand in that corner. I, I don't yep. know about the tree, but yep, there's an is. existing fence. Right. All, all of the trees are staying in place where we've designed the buildings around the trees, so that beautiful uh, cherry tree that's well over 100 years is staying. Oh, well, that's good. I was worried about that. Yeah, it's an absolutely um, beautiful tree. So it's been all the buildings have been desi designed around the uh, root system. Well, you've had letters from various landscapers all um, commenting on your non use of pesticides and your care for the earth. Uh, which is certainly a positive. Um, yeah. is there, so there are no other callers. Is there any, are, no, you no, know, no, Ray, there, you want to say something or? Uh, I'm okay with it. To, there are the way they, they, pardon me. There are a few other callers on the line. I, if I can unmute them to make sure that they, I have nothing to say. Okay. okay. Applicants, please mute your TV in the background. Yeah, um, caller. I'm I'm, uh, I'm for uh, Georgia Corrode that, okay. that application. Okay. No, sorry. Uh, okay, understood. Uh, we'll keep you muted until your thing. And uh, we have another caller on the line. Yeah, this is Len Ackerman. I'm on for the next matter, Maidstone. Okay, understood. Thank you. And there is one more caller on the line. Okay, they're not responding. I'm going to mute their microphone. Thank you very much. Okay, Larry, do you have a comment? You're muted. Oh, one second. There you Hello. Larry, you can repeat yourself. You were muted. No one heard what you had to say. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Okay, I'm okay with it. 
Uh, okay, uh, Craig? I'm fine. I, I think we've been through this property before, and I've always been impressed with it. And the, the supportive letter this time is a beautiful letter, so I have no problem. Okay, and Chris? Yeah, I agree with Craig. There's plenty of screening, and uh, I think they did a good job. So I'm okay. Okay. So um, do I have a motion to close this? So move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> Aye. Okay. Now we will go to the Maidstone, and we do have the applicant present. I will unmute their microphone. Applicant, you are unmuted. One second. Let me go to the next. Applicant, you are unmuted. Yeah, this is Lenny Ackerman. Are we ready for uh, Maidstone? Yes. Yes. Good morning, Lenny. Lenny, please Good morning. the TV in the background. Well, does that mean you want me to turn off the sound? Yes. You want me to turn the sound off? Yeah, yes. okay. All right, and just listen on the telephone, correct? Basically, that's, yeah, okay, I got it. Thank you, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, first of all, I, I, uh, I'm appearing on behalf of Maidstone. However, I just want to compliment Pam Bennett for all the effort and work she's done to bring this about. I think this is a tremendous achievement, and I, I want to compliment her and uh, Becky Molinari and the entire board of the village for working so diligently to bring village government back to this operational level. Now, with respect to the Maidstone, um, this morning we received um, objection letters from several neighbors, and I, I'll defer to the chair on this. I, I think we've adequately addressed these concerns. Um, it's our position that there's no need to have a fence under common ownership. Um, I believe that uh, the owner of the house and the owner of Maidstone, uh, both being beneficial owners, have a right to enjoy you know, their property undisturbed. The pretext on which this application um, is made is basically that in the event that there is single and separate ownership unrelated, then of course uh, a fence could be installed. But Considering the, the basis and the, the history of this application and how this determination was made, which we're seeking to amend, I think it's reasonable and sensible uh, to allow the properties to be open and undisturbed. Okay. <clears throat> well, until we got those letters yesterday, I actually thought, you know, it was a slam dunk, no problem and everything. But I do understand that neighbor uh just to the south um who's worried about you know this disturbance and <clears throat> i think this is like the start of an opportunity it's up to the village board at some point to make a balance between the historic inns and the historic neighborhood um a six foot double fence with noise baffling does seem to me since they are in the same ownership as uh as a little bit over the top i mean we didn't require that for the 1770 house which is what this is based on as far as outdoor dining um but they bring up a valid point that it shouldn't be commingled i think uh daryl westfall had used those words and um you know, Ray, what do you think about that? Uh, I'm in agreement with you. I mean, if, if there could be some type of uh, separation, uh, I think would be good. I, I don't think it should just be, you know, fr free, you know, free nilly, you know, walking back and forth. I think there should be something there. Yeah, maybe a post and rail fence or I don't know. You know, some separation, well, but... What I'd suggest to the chair then, we'd put, I'd like to put it over, let me consult with the client um, based upon um, you know, the comments of the board and, and we'll then come back to you with um, a, a response. Yeah, some, some reasonable thing to separate the two without it being uh, you know, so tall and so, so looming over everybody. So 
I understand. I understand. So yeah. could we put this Brandy? over to the... Yeah. Do you have the a next comment, week, the next... yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. The, the concern to put up the fence is not a concern of the owner because the owner is both places. It's for the neighborhood. Well, it was originally for the for, there was a there was a separate owner when this went through the the court system, so it was a protection for a totally different neighbor, which I think Mr. Ackerman's made in his uh, summary. Yes, that's correct. That's correct. Um, Larry, I, I agree. I think there should be some separation. One's residential; it's in a residential neighborhood, and I think there should be a separation. Okay, and Chris, we'd like to hear from you. Uh, hey, Liz, um, I agree with you. Uh, I was okay with this, but as per the letters and the board's um, direction on this, uh, we can, you know, we, we can adjourn it and um, see, you know, where we go with this. Okay. All right. So do I have a motion to adjourn this, this application? Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Second. Aye. 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 Okay. Mayhaze. <laughs> and the last one is the application of Pond Acquisition Corporation at 291 Montauk Highway. Is the applicant present for this one? I will unmute. We have a, a few new callers on the line. Caller, you are on the air. Hello, caller, you are on the air. When you unmute, you talk to everybody. It's I'm I'm not here for the pond acquisition. Understood. Thank you. If you could uh, call back for your uh, application, that would be best. Thank you. I have a few people on the line. I work down. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. One sec. I Call believe it's Mr. Ackerman again. It's no. Mr. Ackerman again? No. No, it's not. No. Um, uh, I have an adjournment on, on Mullen for a full hearing. It's set forth in my letter request. Okay. Um, Call her. That's to be Samantha Thompson and Emily Hatch. Okay, I have one Thompson calling in. Let me just make sure. Hi, this is Samantha Thompson. Good morning. Good morning. Would you say uh, what you would like to do? Yes. So we, um, as per the ZBA determination from April 2018, we were instructed and we're in the process of installing an upgraded septic system for the entire property at 291 Montauk Highway. Given, um, as I'm sure, as, as you all know, we had um, kind of a catastrophic fire that pushed all of our items for a number of months, um, and now we are also. Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm following along on my computer, and the the text is a little confusing. Um, but and then in addition, with this pandemic, we are also you know currently in a position where we're unable to complete the installation of the septic system at this time. We are in the process, and we have ordered all the materials, and we have a number of the. We're trying to keep contractors coming to the property, but just given safety concerns, um, distribution, manufacturing, and labor delays as a result of the pandemic, we are requesting an extension to, at this point, we believe that reasonably we can complete it by June, uh, by the end of June, given the current state of things, and um, it is quite fluid, but we are, we are hopeful that we can get it installed by Friday, June um, 26th. No, I think that's perfectly reasonable, um, Craig. That's fine. Yeah, Ray. I have no problem if they put in a new system. I'm all for it. Okay, Larry. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> and Chris. No choice. Absolutely. <laughs> no problem. Okay, so do I have okay. a motion to accept? Great. Make a motion. Make a motion. Second. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 All right. Um, we have two requests for adjournments. One of them is Nicole and Alan Salmasi, 
right here on 73 Davis Lane. It seems to me, I think, um, according to Pam, this is the fifth request for adjournment. Um, I think if it, if they want to adjourn the next time, they have to, to start all over again. But this is just a warning. And the second one is Donald R. Mullen, Jr., 67 Cross Highway. Um, we can have a motion to accept the adjournments. Make a motion. Second. Second. OK, I, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so now we're going to the um, I guess the continued hearings. Um, the the first one is James D. Danella, forty nine La Forest Lane. Is the applicant present? Yes, plenty action again. Uh, Liz, you have you have my April twentieth twentieth letter. Um, in which I indicated yes. that we re reduced the request to uh, 470 square feet, uh, first floor uh, 248 and 222. I've also um, added um, a, uh, a substantial mitigation uh, offer here based upon the fact that uh, we have filed uh, with Drew Bennett an application uh, with respect to the um, additional bedroom. Uh, that was not covered under the prior health department approval and based upon our interpretation of the um, code section uh, 233-2 septic permit requirements uh, we would not without this offer of mitigation be required to upgrade to a low nitrogen ia system and i think that offer of mitigation should be seriously considered as a reasonable offer by the board in granting this application. Okay, well, <clears throat> speaking of that letter, there are a couple of things that I disagreed with. Um, you know, I have talked to Ken Cullum about the history of this house. And, you know, the, the letter states categorically that they are entitled to it because it's a pre-existing non-conforming whatever but in truth the history of this house was that it was a very small cottage and they asked for a renovation and instead of just renovated they built this rather large and lengthy house because the way the property is um done it, it the house goes practically from one side to the other because it's sort of a pie shaped lot. And um, it was over the GFA. And so they designated part of the second story as attic and storage space. And then um, it sort of morphed into bedroom and bath space. So it wasn't totally a clean thing. And I also reached out to Beth Baldwin to find out um, if indeed we had to start at the higher number of GFA or whether we go with the approved village number. Beth, could you weigh in on this? Uh, sure. Um, it's always been my opinion that in the situation where you have a non-conforming building and they are then asking for a variance, that the variance is actually the difference between the what is permitted in the district and what the applicant is asking for, not what the applicant has per their pre-existing number to what is um, they're asking for. So I disagree, Lenny, with your letter as far as um, how you're calculating the variance. I think I, um, Billy's notice and how everything has been calculated is is. The, the substantial difference is the, or the difference is between that. I think you can consider and the board can consider when they're reviewing an application and reviewing the substantiality of a variance, the board can consider what the pre-existing number is when they're looking at it. Um, but as for actually calculating the variance request, I believe it's the, um, what is per permitted in the zoning district um, and what is, uh, asking. So. 
Right. And, and what number do you come, what is your calculation, your percentage calculation? Um, I don't have that number. I mean, I'm Billy, I'm sure. Uh, I, I do. It's 25%. There you go. Because you're, you're asking for 7071 versus a max of 5679. And also, I have another right. issue. In the proposal, it says existing is 6417. In your write up, you're saying it's it's 200 uh, square feet higher. 6617. Six, um, right, yeah. right. So I think there's a discrepancy. But again, you're talking about 25% variance of the current max, and I think that's substantial. You know, okay. okay, well, obviously we, obviously we disagree, we disagree on the law, and that's why we have the, that's why we have courts to make a final determination. I, I, I don't think you're correct on the law, Beth, but I don't want to argue the law now. Um, so what, what, whatever your determination um, is, you know, Let's close the hearing, make your determination, and let you know we'll move on. I understand. It. I, I disagree, but I, I don't. I don't understand how you could get to such an incredible number when historically, with all the precedent, uh, we've always based the increase on what was pre-existing non-conforming. Now we, and that's now we haven't. Now talk well, to okay. talk well, to well, the we, building we, inspector. We have not based it on that. And I think that's a I that's see. something that the board can always consider when they're making a determination. But when you're putting out what the actual variance is, I think it's that dis the difference between what is permitted and what the applicant is asking for. Absolutely, the board can consider that there's a pre-existing number here, and that could calculate into the substantiality of it. But as for actually right. what the request is, I think it's the difference between what is permitted versus what they're at, what you're asking for. Okay. All right. Well, you write the determination as you write the determination, and we'll go from there, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, I think the board so can still review the application. I don't. I think that was just one aspect of it. Right. 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 I'd like to also clear up something that keeps popping up in your letters, which is that it, since it's behind the high edge, you know, it's it doesn't matter in the neighborhood. I, I totally disagree with that. I think the vil the village code is valid, whether it's behind a high hedge, whether it's on a flag lot or whatever. Just because you can't see it, it doesn't mean that you can do whatever, you know, build whatever you want. So that's no, I, my two cents. I, um, I agree with I just, that. Uh, this business that you can't see it, therefore you can do it. I don't like that at all. Okay. No, I, look, Ray, uh, do you have Larry. a comment? Yes, the code is the code, and whether you can see it or not doesn't make any difference to me. No, I understand. Larry, can I just respond? Uh, Liz, can I just respond to Larry's point about the extra 200 can. square feet? Yeah, yeah. That, that comes about because of the recalculation of double height ceilings. Also, I, I wish to point out that all these improvements um, that uh, Ken Column has referred to, and Liz has referred to a reference, were done by the prior owner. And in, um, in the purchase of this house, the uh, present owner and the present applicant uh, relied upon the CFO that was granted, which um, gave us a starting number of pre existing non conforming GFA. Um, and that's the basis on which we're making the addition. Yeah. And it's Really, it's 470 square feet. It's um, it's not 25 percent uh, expansion. I mean, that, that like poisons the well when you use a term like that. It's it's 470 square feet over what's existing. But I, I understand that's your position, and we'll we'll have to we'll have to review it after we get the determination. So okay, could, could we close the? Well, not yet. I, I want to hear from my uh, oh, vice oh, chair. Sorry. Yeah, sure. sure. I, I, I have to recuse myself. Yeah. Oh, right. You have to recuse yourself. Sorry. Yeah. Too bad. <laughs> um, all right. And Chris, you're not on this because it's a uh, uh, continued hearing. So, all right. Um, let's make a hmm, motion to. Should we close the hearing, Beth? Um, if the applicant doesn't have anything else, you can have, you can close the hearing. Okay. All right. A motion right. to close no. the hearing. So move. 
Second. Uh, all in favor, aye. 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 Okay, so now. Uh, but could, may I ask this, could I just interrupt for a second, please? So, so who's voting on this? Uh, I'm sorry, Who, who's voting on this? Well, it's uh, me, Larry, and Craig. There are three of us because John McGurk, who was sitting on it, um, isn't on today because his father is, is not well. Oh, I so it's see. three. Okay. All right. It's the only the, okay. <laughs> the only three of us. Um, okay, I got it. Okay. Okay. So an, a, another continued hearing, our we're which we're doing together is Zay and Zahn on uh, Chauncey Close. Is the applicant present for yes. Chauncey Close? Lenny Ackerman. Okay. And this is as a. I noted uh, my, as I noted in my April 15th letter, um, uh, Rich Warren's office, InterScience, uh, and uh, the Grimes team work very diligently uh, with the uh, buffer plant. And we've accepted uh, the conditions and recommendations of Billy Hajek in his most recent memo. So I believe we're prepared to move forward with this application and close the hearing. Okay, well, we, we defer to Billy on this one. Billy, do you have something you'd like to say? Uh, <clears throat> I, I think the plan was amended. I, I, when I, I met with the applicants on a number of occasions, we reviewed the plan multiple times. They were receptive to uh, making changes and incorporating my suggestions. And I, I'm pretty satisfied with the, the latest plan that's before you right now. As long as they're agreeing to the conditions of approval or conditions that I recommend on the project. I have no other concerns with, with it at this time. Good. Uh, then can we close the hearing? Uh, motion. motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Then we'll have a termination in the next meeting. Um, now we turn to the new hearings portion. Next is the application of Georgica LLC, 283 Georgica Road. Uh, Ms. Bennett, will you read the app, the notice? Yes. Oh. And we can't hear you. Oh, sorry. Right. Am I good? Yes. yes. Much better. Applicate application of Georgica LLC, Suffolk County tax map number 301. 12 to 1.1 1 .1 for area variances from chapter 278 zoning to reconstruct with alterations a pre existing and non conforming accessory building. Variances are sought from section 278 3D1 to reconstruct with alterations a 1,964 square foot accessory building containing multiple rooms where accessory buildings are limited to 250 square feet in gross floor area and cannot contain more than one room. A 1,986 square foot variance is requested from section 278 3D7 to permit the reconstruction of an, ex of, accessory, of an accessory building where the combined gross floor area for all existing accessory buildings totals 3,564 square feet and the maximum permitted accessory building gross floor area for this lot is 1,578 square feet. The subject property is 115,736 square feet in area and is located at 283 Georgia Road in Residence District R80. This project is classified as a type two action in accordance with CEQA. Um, Chris, you're gonna be sitting on this also? Yes. Okay. Um, is the applicant present? Yes, uh, Michael McCaffrey for the applicant on Georgica. I'm the architect for the project. <laughs> Would you like to describe what you were planning to do? We have a, an existing accessory structure which had, which had a badly deteriorated roof. It had been used to, to store artworks of uh, Susan Tepper. And um, the, uh, in, in looking at uh, repairing the roof, it, was, uh, it came to, uh, came to light that the structure was uh, minimal and uh, not uh, not capable of supporting the new roof 
if we had it to structure the new roof, we would have to have stronger walls to hold it up. If we had the stronger walls to hold it up, which we felt we could do under a kind of a repair in kind, we would need a new foundation to support the new walls and the new roof because it's so much heavier than the two by four construction that's there now. So basically, the, uh, putting in the foundation wall or a new foundation wall to support the, the, the walls and the roof of the building, that is the, the, basically the alteration that uh, kicked us into the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals. We're not looking for any, you know, to expand the footprint. We're looking, we'd like to have exactly what we have back again, but it's 17 feet high and the zoning uh, precludes that to be on 14 feet, so to be in a smaller degree of nonconformance, we are suggesting that we would reduce the height to, uh, to 14 feet. Uh, we, we know we're over the area, but it's an existing non-conforming C of O legal space. And in addition, since we're obliged to undertake, you know, a great volume of work, we also, at the same time, wanted to put, um, to make a cellar under the building because it's a, you know, for, for zoning square footage, it doesn't, it's not counted. And it will allow us to, uh, to separate the storage that had been in the barn, which was the Susan Tepper artworks that she, you know, she had used that barn building as a studio uh, throughout the late 70s and early 80s. And since he passed away in early 1991, the paintings had been stored in the building. When the roof problem came to light, the artwork was removed and cleaned and restored. It's being stored off site now. But the hope is to bring it back and to put it into back where it was, into the, the room where it was created. We also use that space to uh, store seasonal furniture, which goes in and out every year and threatens to uh, damage the artwork. And that is, we want to separate the storage of that frequently moved bulky furniture from the artwork. So that's why we uh, <clears throat> include the seller as part of the application. Did I uh, hear you uh, correctly that the, the artist is passed away? Yes. 1991, she did, yeah, she right? did pass away in 1991. She had started the uh, East Hampton Artist Collaborative in 1985, which is still in operation. And interestingly enough, after the cleaning, there was some, some new interest in the artworks. And uh, if you wanted to see them, you could go to the East Hampton Library in August, where there'd be a show of Susan Tepper artwork. <clears throat> Ray, as our resident builder, mm -hmm. um, would you like to weigh in? <laughs> well, I just want—I just want to make sure that it's only going to be used for storage, for one. That there's no living or, cool. or anything like that in there. No living, just storage. Okay. Is it because going to be? It's not going to be heated and and, uh, and and cooled, correct? I think it has to for his artwork. We want to—we want to create a, a sort of a space where the art won't deteriorate. It's. Yeah. And what is it going to be used for? Besides storage. storage. Uh, storage of the uh, seasonal furniture. Um, the okay, so it's also, not going to be used of, as of an the art? Applicant, yes, the daughter of the applicant has expressed an interest in painting. It, maybe it runs, maybe it's in the genes, but uh, she might want to use the space as an art studio. She's, she's a teenager now, but, uh, yeah. it, you know. Hey, Ray, how is your um, review of their construction protocol and the applicant's description on what they were doing with the roof and, and the basement? How did that sound? Again, you're the builder. Yeah, no, that's, that's all okay, uh, for sure. Um, you know, I'm, I'm concerned with heating and cooling because if this is a storage building, it shouldn't be insulated um, and, and sheetrock that should be, you know, unfinished. 
But, but if you have uh, art, don't you have to have the right temperature in winter or summer? Otherwise, it gets destroyed. Can we put something in the... Can we put something in the determination that maybe it's conditioned for the sake of preserving artwork? However, you know, it's not limited to, you know, occupancy of some issue. Like I guess, and I agree with Ray, but, you, you know, I, I think we might have to allow them, I mean, to store artwork. We've done that before. You yeah, know, but, you, you know, be, they could also store artwork in the basement. That could be they could have a room that's humidified in the basement and then in the sure. the main part of the building not have any finished uh walls my concern the is this uh, three of those says that the building is air conditioned and it does have a heater but it was uh, determined that the heater should not be used i don't think we're asking for an expansion of what we already had it did have an air condition it has an air conditioner now which it has a CFO for. Yeah, yeah, but once you're taking it down, right? Then when, it, it's not, it, it's the things right. are no but longer I, I'm valid. not looking for more than I already have. I'm just looking to get back what, you know, and, and a proper art storage space. I mean, really, it's, it's, it's not usable as art storage if, there's, if it lacks heating and cooling. It just won't be, it's not, it's not appropriate. Larry? Well, as, as I said, if it's for storage of art that you want to preserve, you have to have the proper heating. And, but I think we have to limit it that it's just for storage and nothing else. I agree with Larry. I don't understand why we can't let, allow them their proper climate for the, for the artwork and just make it very clear in the determination that it's a storage space for artwork. And other furniture. Yeah. 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 Okay. I was only suggesting because I know other places that they've carved out part of a part of it and had that room sort of humidified or dehumidified and then the rest of it was left kind of in a rough state. But Right. It's up. To, it's up to you. There's an awful lot of artwork. It, it was pretty uh, filled to the gills uh, with artwork, and that's why it was made it very difficult to move the seasonal furniture in and out. You know, putting the artwork at risk. Okay. Is there anybody that wants to call in on this one? I have two eighty-three Georgia. On the line. Uh, let me Are there any? Them accordingly. Hi, I'm Rick McMaster. Yes. And uh, callers, could you please mute your TV in the background? My TV is muted right now. This is Rick McMaster. I've been working on the property since 1979. Give me a second. All right. Sure. It was one of the other callers. Thank you. For That's okay. Hello? Hello? Go ahead, Rick. Hi, uh, it's Rick McMaster. I've been working on the property since roughly 1979, 1978, um, when my father introduced me to Ariel's mother and father um, and was part of, I was fortunate to be able to see her doing her artwork while she was working in the art studio and prior to them purchasing this land, it was a working farm, and the structure that we're referring to right now, I think it used to house the cows or horses that were particularly on the farm at that particular point in time. Um, Martin Tepper then renovated that back in, I think, 1977 for his wife to be able to do her artwork there. Um, and through the course of many, many years, as Mr. McCaffrey was just saying, um, that uh, we, it's gone to disarray. Um, and the art that was there, if, I'm, if my memory serves me well, 
it's near 400 pieces of art, um, ranging in size from probably two by two up to six by eight foot pieces of art, which is pretty um, amazing, if you ask me. Um, so one of the issues that we had been having on that particular piece of property was um, for a very long time when, when the process of, of renovating the main house, the garage, and et cetera, we left the studio for last because we weren't sure what was going to happen to it. Um, I know that Ms. Pepper wanted us to um, resurrect it as her mom's art studio so that therefore she could still have her children be able to go in there and do some artwork in there. So hence the reason why it was has always been heated and air conditioned, one to save the art, but also so that they could go in there and do this. Um, we, I think uh, Michael McCaffrey and I, and, and also Brian King, who is the builder, um, we were wanting to be able to use the space down below to be able to um, use a acclimated um, system to be able to preserve the art in the basement, and then therefore on um, portion of that, and then the storage um, either could be upstairs or downstairs for the furniture. I don't. Okay. Have you all seen the property at all? Yes, we all yes. we all have gone to it there. Okay. I mean, as long, okay. as, as, long as it's not uh, 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 you know a sleeping space, uh, I'm okay with. It. Okay, Chris. Uh, yeah, I agree with Ray. I, uh, as long as it's not a sleeping space, we can note that in the determination, but uh, I have no problem with allowing them to condition it for artwork and storage. Okay. Well, but, I've, seen, I've seen the property and uh, it needs a lot of reconditioning. I asked, so is it going to be completely torn down and started again? Yes. Yes. The, yes. The, that's what, what. That's what. That's why we're here at the zoning board of appeals. Because what is the foundation. What are the rules on a non-conforming structure being improved? Um, that's why he's getting the variances. Yeah. yeah so I it's mean, the same. When it's being torn down, it doesn't have any more. Uh, pre-existing non-conforming because it's not pre-existing anymore. Um, but we're if we do grant this variance, we're giving them permission to rebuild because it, the timbers are all rotted out and it's going to collapse, basically. And they are lowering the height of the ridge, which right. is now. Cool. I have a question. We're saying that there could be uh, proper temperature, proper temperature all year round. And are we saying that it also will use as, as a semi art studio or just for storage? We have to think, we have to clarify that. Usually, usually it is a studio would be a non conforming use, only can be used for storage per zoning regulations. However, the current CFO calls it a studio and gives it the ability to be used as an art studio. Because there's a daughter who has an interest in becoming an artist, question mark, who knows about teenagers, uh, we'd like to be able to continue that non-conforming use of art studio as well as storage. If that, I don't think it would be too much of a stretch, and I don't think it's too much of a probability that it would be uh, uh, you know, a, a great studio for a, for, for for a long time and just want to keep open the possibility at this point. Okay, well, I'm for all for encouraging young artists, so I, I would be fine with that. And, and Beth can certainly put the, the wording in the, in the determination, mm -hmm. I would assume, right? No problem. Yeah. Okay, do I have a motion to close this here? Motion. So Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good. Moving right along okay. to 34 Darby LLC at 34 Darby Lane, Ms. Bennett. Thank you very much. Application, application of 34 Darby LLC, subject number 301-81217 for variances from chapter 78 zoning, take alterations and construct an addition to a pre-existing non-conforming residence. Variances of 28.9 feet and 6 feet are requested from section 
278-3A-4A -A to make alterations to an existing residence located 21.1 feet from the side yard lot line and constructing sections 44 feet from the side yard lot line with a required setback to 50 feet. The subject property is 96,506 square feet in area and is located at Wilson-Kelby Lane in residence R80. This project was classified as an IP action in accordance with CEQA. Pam, can you repeat the last part? We didn't hear you. This project is classified as a type of action in accordance with CEQA. One more time. We, we could not hear you. This project is classified as a type of action in accordance with CEQA. Okay. Is the applicant present? I'll unmute. Mr. Ackerman. Yes. Ackerman. Uh, yes. Uh, as I've indicated in my letter of April 15th, this is a de minimis application. It's a lovely restoration by Mrs. Rayner. Um, they're installing a, a chimney and uh, a small renovation to the kitchen. I, I think this should um, be recognized as a very sensible uh, variance application and the, the least amount of uh, variance necessary to achieve uh, this restoration. Thank you. Yeah, it, it's a beautiful property. Um, I know its history and um, I always have, I have a soft spot for, for this property. And it's unfortunate, the house was sited very close to the side property line. Um, and it has uh, a big lawn and a swimming pool that looks like it's part of a grotto from some Italianate villa. And the um, old owner lived up up, up over the swimming pool. And um, so th this was sort of a second house on the property and then they split it. Um, I, I have no problem. It's, it's, you want to install a, a large uh, mantelpiece, right, in the library? Yes, that's right. Okay. That's correct. Um, Ray, do you, would you yeah. like? I have, I have no problem with it. Craig? Oh, this is fine. I that's quite a kitchen they're going to put in, but I have no. It's it will improve the house. And Larry, oh, oh, I'm okay with it. And Chris, what do you say? Uh, I'm okay. You know, everything is being done to the interior of the property, not to the sides. And uh, they seem to screen the air conditioning units well, and the property is screened in. So I don't have any problem with this either. Thank you. Right. And, and I think it's the first time the applicant has come to us ahead of time instead of asking forgiveness. So with that, we are very grateful, Mr. Ackerman. Um, <laughs> do I, is there a motion to close this hearing? Motion. Uh, second? Second. Second. All, Aye. all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, next we have, next and last, we have 49 Hunting Lane, LLC. 49 Hunting Lane. Ms. Bennett? Application of 49 Hunting Lane, LLC, plain text map number 301. Ms. Bennett, we cannot hear you. Pam, you have to speak up. For your microphone, something. Application of 49 Hunting Lane, LLC, plain text map number 301, B8 9.2, for area variances from the 78 zoning. Pam, we, I'm sorry, we still can't we, we still can't hear you. Um, there might be something wrong with your connection. Does anyone else have the notice? Maybe they I can have, read it. I have the notice. Would you like me to read it? Yeah, maybe Billy can read it. Is that okay? Yes. Read it, Billy. Okay. Uh, application of 49 Hunting Lane, LLC, Suffolk County Tax Map Number 301-3-8-9.2 for area variances from Chapter 278 zoning to construct a swimming pool and patio. A 9.1 foot variance is requested from section 278-3A5B to construct a patio 0.9 feet from a side yard lot line where the required setback is 10 feet. A 18.8 foot variance is requested from section 278-3A5C to construct a swimming pool 1.2 feet from the side yard lot line where the required setback is 20 feet. A variance is requested from 278-1A to permit the construction of an accessory structure on property without a principal building. 
The subject property is 16,541 square feet in size and is located at 49 Hunting Lane in Residence District R40 and the Hunting Lane Historic District. This project requires approval of the Village Design Review Board and is classified as a Type 2 action in accordance with secret. Is the applicant present? Yes, Lenny Ackerman. Um, as I set forth in summary in my April 15th letter to the chair and to members of the board, we've located this um, in both a conforming location as to um, any future development of the property, either as single and separate lots or as merged lots. And you know, I think this is an opportunity again, as we've done in the past with tennis courts, where um, uh, th this applicant is satisfied at this point in time. Uh, to having just the pool and not being forced to develop a, a single family primary or secondary residence unnecessarily just to satisfy the zoning code. So I, I think that sensible application and the least amount of variance is necessary to reach the goal here. Thank you. I think when you moved it, I, the first go around, it was so close yeah. to the to the property line that every I think everybody was shocked like what what is going on there but when you moved it to the center into a conforming location we've also previously um, accepted a, a children's play set on that property as as a separate uh, without right. building on it um, so I don't have a problem with it now but Ray I agree it's much better moved. Now, now obviously, the, the property never can be sold. It almost has to be part of, of, of the contiguous property. Because uh, if it is, it can't be sold separately, can it? Should that be a stipulation? And why can't no, it be sold? Our problem. No, in other words, if it's sold, <laughs> if I just buy it, or well, I'm a, a third party, and I just have a swimming pool there and nothing else, uh, is that fair? It's almost like a recreation facility. Oh, but Larry, we don't have to look to the future because actually I think it can be sold and a, and a small house built on it. But that it, that really isn't um, our concern. But that be a I agree. You can't I limit. Mean, you can't limit, Larry. You can't limit the alienability of someone's property and tell them they can't sell it. it you know, and, and I, they wouldn't buy. I think no the one, issue no one's would be. Buy it. Cool. Right. I, I, I yeah. think the issue is that if a buy, somebody buys it and it's just this swimming pool, nothing else. But you I, can't I, get I, an up. You have to get an updated CO. But you can't get an updated CO if there's no residents on the property. Okay. Okay. So the, we're saying the same thing. In right. right. Yeah, that's right. Thank you. Okay. I have no yeah. problem. All right. Uh, um, is there anyone in line that wanted to comment on this application? We should ask Jason. We had one yeah, caller. I assume that Jason will tell us when if a caller comes in. We had one um, uh, additional caller that was on the line, and uh, we unmuted them uh, during the previous uh, hearing, and no one picked, no one was there to the best of okay. our knowledge, and then they hung up. So okay. I wrote it in our. Uh, so yeah, that's about it. Uh, currently, okay, there's no so one there's else no on the line. line. Okay, I just wasn't. All right, sure. Chris Minardi. Yeah, well, we've done this before for a property up in Georgia, and um, I don't have any problem with this either. So it's okay. Yeah, it's a young family with kids. They want their own swimming pool, um, and they, you know, probably don't want to merge the properties for financial reasons. So um, I'm okay. It's certainly not going to hurt the neighborhood, um, and it's not it's not a substantial. So. Um, is there anybody else who wants well, to talk about this? No, but I, I just want to say that this went off very well. Again, you know, compliments to everyone for indulging and keeping me busy. I thought I was going to be on the screen, Beth, for some reason. So I got all oh. dressed up. I got out of I got out of my swimming trunk, Beth. <laughs> you only have to worry all about right. the top half, Lenny. Lenny, you had the, you had a monopoly <laughs> today. Uh, you had, you're still in Florida. Yeah, yeah you I'm had swim trunks, Florida. but we have pajamas to get out of. So, you know. <laughs> um, is there right, a motion to close? Thank, thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Is there a bye motion bye. to close the hearing on Hunting Lane? So moved. All in favor? Second. Aye. Aye. Aye.
And now, is there a motion to close the meeting? Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank Aye. you, everybody. Good job.